Hey guys, Strong Style Studios back again. It's Alex. Just in the Orange Dream, your current Strong Style Studios world champion of the world. Until I beat you. And it's me, Noah. Okay. And we're here with your WWE Battleground 2013 pay per view review. Hopefully, the last Battleground we ever see because this show was a pile of dog shit. <laughs> that is putting it mildly, actually. <laughs> this show was. Yeah, steaming pile of ice cream. Um, yeah. I think I, I said online, and I think I said to you guys, like, I was shocked that TNA somehow did not have the worst show of the year. Well, they still have time, but I don't think... But I don't think Bound for Boy is going to be worse, worse than this the show. Thing, well, we, none of us have seen the Knockouts show either. Well, I don't I've heard that. that's... I don't, I don't count. Is that, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm talking about pay per view. Show. Well, yeah. actual, real pay per views. Anyway, let's, let's, let's get this, you know, turd over with. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. you know what's to come. Very oh yeah, it's, positive review here. All right. Uh, first up, we had Alberto Del Rio taking on RVD in a hardcore rules match for the world title. Uh, actually, ended up being probably the third best match on the show. Um, two guys actually worked pretty well together. Um, what was it that you said, Justin, about this match, though? Do you well, remember? I don't remember. What okay. Well, I'll, I'll have to quote him. You, I think you said, "quote This was the most carefully." One of the match like with the most carefully executed spots ever. Yeah, they were like just gently placing things on the other guy, gently running, you falling, know, yeah. falling. Yeah, yeah. It was like a ballet match <laughs> or something. Yeah, I actually think I liked their match from Night Champions more, just because I think it was better fast paced. I know a lot of people didn't like that match, but I actually we actually enjoyed it. I think. I, I thought, yeah, I thought their match from Night Champions was quite a bit better. Personally. Yeah, I, th I think they showed some chemistry, and like I, this match, just they they slowed it down a way down. And and there's kind of, oh, I'm sorry to cut you off, no, but I'm going to keep going. <laughs> I was just going to say, they just kind of move from one spot to the next, you know, just set up a spot, do yeah. it, set up a spot, do it. There's no real flow to the match. Yeah, um, like, Dario didn't even work, out the, work the arm in, at all in this match. and was like, well, it's a hardcore match. Like, why wouldn't you, you know, use, put his arm in the, in the ladder or whatever or something, you know? Or at least, uh, you know, fake that he's going to do the same, uh, um, or at least, I don't know, fake the finish so much yeah. the last one. Obviously, the rope break thing wouldn't have counted, but I don't know. I just felt like this match, I feel like the feud could have ended at Night of Champions. I mean, that yeah. match was better if they would have just put a different finish on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although, this match did have a better, uh, I did really like the finish of this match. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, it showed a nice aggressive side of Del Rio, and I thought, like, it looked painful. I mean, he used the cross arm breaker with the chair. That was kind of cool. There were definitely some cool spots and cool moments. Yeah. Oh, RVD like completely destroying himself with that Van Terminator attempt. Yeah. Was nice. Yeah. yeah. And I like how it played into the finish too. It's like yeah. he knocked himself out, which it looked like he did. Yeah. He looked like he got. I really <laughs> wish he would have hit that though, because I've never seen him like no, attempt it like that. He probably would have killed Del. Yeah. Like if Del Rio wouldn't have moved, that chair would have come flying right no. into his face. Oh, oh and let's also mention. In this match, that like the like WWE apparently just heard slow motion and like almost every oh replay, my God. like every three minutes you get a replay in of, slow in motion, slow yeah. motion. Which uh, you know for wrestling it doesn't always look well because you can kind of see the guy safely land once in a while or something. It's like watching a magic trick in <laughs> yeah. slow motion. Yeah. Like, you kind of pick up on the views <laughs> and the, the things. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, what you guys give this one? I gave it two and three quarter. I thought it was, you know, um, I thought it was a below average Del Rio title match and probably about an average RVD match for what he's doing now. Okay. Not pretty decent. I went, I went a little high. I went, I went three. I also went two and three quarter. Okay. okay. Uh, next up, we, well, we had three really, really bad matches in a row. First up was <laughs> Curtis Axel. The gauntlet of bad matches. Right now. <laughs> yeah, the, the sink is lingering on this. Yeah. yeah. Um, we had Curtis Axel defending his ice intercontinental title against R Truth. That's right. Well, Curtis... Wasn't the uh, tag match first before? Oh, this? you are right. God damn, I, did. I messed up again. I botched. Yeah, we had the well. It was a pretty forgettable match except for the finish, which was the Great Collie and Santino Morella. Yes, those two guys got on pay per view. Versus the Real Americans and Tony Cesaro and Jack Swagger, which was this was basically a Raw match with a sweet. This finish. was a SmackDown match. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. This, was, this was not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. This was like a Heat match if Heat were still existing. Yes. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, the only reason they had this match was to show off Anto Antonio Cesaro's strength, that which was in, which was cool. Which was cool. Yeah. But it wasn't worth. Which, it. which oh, really was one of the few highlights of the show was that spot. Yeah, that was yeah. great. Um, also, like one that one little bio spot I liked was uh, Santana Rella trying to do the nip up and just fall on yeah. his ass. That was yeah. funny. Mm -hmm. That was funny. Kind of wish they did more comedy in this matchup, but it made the match you know entertaining. 
Yeah, I mean, this wasn't much of a match. It was a pretty basic match. They were just setting up for the spot, and that's what everyone's going to remember. And, and, then, and then they did the same exact spot on Raw the next night. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, this match was completely pointless. Yeah, it was yeah. useless. But, yeah. Yeah. So I, you don't even need to go out of your way to watch this show well, for that. No. You can just yeah. watch the clips on YouTube. Go on Raw. Hulu. If you got yeah. Hulu, I think they have it on that. Yeah. Uh, I gave this a star. Um, I actually gave it a star and a half, just because uh, I like that spot. Okay. It was very impressive. I'm gonna split you guys, and I give it a star and a quarter. All right. Yeah, but it wasn't much of a match. No, I mean the 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 star was for the spot, and the quarter was for the. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Now we have Curtis Axel defending his intercontinental against our truth. Um, this is um, um, this was a match, I guess. It was. They, they wrestled, I think. Um, crowd really did not give a shit about this match. Wrestlers at all. didn't either. This this was just boring as hell. I don't even. I barely remember this match. There was nothing in this match. I don't remember a damn thing in this match. Has, has, okay, I just gotta ask you guys this: Has Curtis Axel ever done like a cool spot, like no. really, or any move that was like really the, the most the most impressive thing I've seen him do what is when he gets kicked behind the leg and does like a fucking flip. Which is like that's stupid looking. Yeah, too. it's it's like well, it looks so cartoony. It's cool that he can do it, but it looks ridiculous. Yeah. It's like, congratulations, you were flipping almost laying on your goddamn head. It's like, yeah, like, idiot. way over something. <laughs> yeah. That's a good question, because I really, nothing comes to mind. <laughs> no, like, nothing. Not even when he was with uh, Otunga as tag champ. <laughs> yeah. God. And CM Punk was more with the Nexus. You know, yeah. like, not, nothing. He's never done a cool spot in his life. No. Probably not, yeah. Mm. I don't know. This match was just, like, it reminded me of that Miz Fandango match from the last show, except more boring and less point to it, if you can <laughs> believe that. Wow. This was just pure nothing. It was a vacuous... Or vac I, don't know, I don't know, vacuous match. Nothingness. It was, uh, it was It was. horrible. Even Paul Heyman looked bored during this match. Yeah, I mean, Heyman has, tries his best, of course, but yeah. even he can't save this turd. No. He couldn't save two tur turds tonight. Yeah. Um, I give this match a star and a half. That is generous. I think so, but like, I... I remember, like, there was a few little <laughs> things, like, they actually wrestled, you know, but... <laughs> there were some moves. There it's, were some moves. Our truth did a scissors kick. That's literally all I remember. <laughs> and I think, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I gave this, like, three three quarters of a star. Wow, that is... It was bad. That was... That's, what'd you get? I gave it a star. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I overrated it. Oh, well. <laughs> overrated it, star and a half. Axel Mark over here. <laughs> 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 uh, I will say the best thing about Curtis Axel is Paul Heyman and his entrance. That's yeah, but it. imagine how much better it would be if it wasn't Curtis Axel <laughs> right. in that role. Like, yeah, it would be better with any, like, Kali in that role would probably be better. Well, that's the things we were going to regret. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> next up, we had another stinker of a match, which was the Divas title match Ooh. between AJ Lee and Brie Bella. I'm um, going to start on this one. Oh, go right ahead. I want to hear this. This, this is quite possibly the worst match of the year. This <laughs> I is think just... So. Horrendous. Yeah. And yeah, it came to my attention the next night or a couple days later that during the match, AJ got a concussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet she still managed to out wrestle Brie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Brie is like the most useful, a useless <laughs> professional wrestler I've ever seen. She can't wrestle. She can't cut a promo. She can't act to save her life. She, can, mm -hmm. she has no facial expressions. Mm -hmm. No. She has nothing. It seems like Any, I think being with Daniel Bryan, like, just by proxy, that she well, would be a little bit better. Well, not only that, she's also a twin, and there's a whole twin, Bella twins gimmick, and she's the sister of someone who's dating John Cena, so that's pretty much their... Yeah, they, they are basically thing. around to sleep with John Cena and Daniel Bryan. That's what I imagine. And to be on that Diva show, which I don't watch. No, never play on it. Never. Yeah. Yeah, this match was... I agree with Noah here. I thought this was... Probably the worst match I've seen of the year. I've seen some people rate it higher, but I don't know if they even bothered watching the match. They probably went to the bathroom. <laughs> right. Because they, none of the spots they did look good. They mistimed everything. Yeah. God, let me start now. God bless AJ Lee for trying. Not, she actually, not that no, hard, though. She, but, like, she tried. She tried to make it look like she's working over the arm of Brie. But, like, Brie Bella couldn't fucking sell. She's just laying there like she's, you know, taking a nap. What did Brie do one thing on offense? Like she, she did like, like, two moves. Yeah, like, yeah. just oh. and they were late in the match. She just got beaten down the whole match. Did like a two move, kind of like a drop kick and some other move, and then she lost. Yeah, 
That was it, when, when the shitty finish would like, st- I guess AJ's with Tamina Snuka now as her bodyguard, and like mm-hmm. she distracted Nick uh, Bree, and then ro- AJ rolled her up one two three. Who gives a shit? This was just complete oh, this was, garbage. For them. This is a, just another example of why I hate the Bella Twins. You know, yeah. I'm sure they're lovely people in person. You know, I'm not sure of that. Maybe I don't know. I'm but probably sure of the opposite. <laughs> I heard. I heard, like I heard Bree's nice. I heard Nikki's a bitch. Yes. Yeah, Whatever. Yeah. Regardless of how nice they are, this match was fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's they say, could like, be the nicest person on earth. Yeah. They could be saints. Rick, Rick, Rick but Flair's this match is terrible. Rick Flair is an asshole, but at least he's a good wrestler. This this. This match was like the disaster movie of matches. <laughs> well, uh, it, it, was, it was no it was ge- bad. It was no Gen- Jenna Moraska and Charmel though. Yeah, this was the worst match I've seen this year. In uh, my this might this might be my worst match. I don't uh, know. I can't think of anything offhand that would be contender. Mainstream wise, anyway, I'm sure there's a lot of other horrible matches in the Indies. Yeah. So, um, shall we do ratings? Uh, I gave it half a star. Dud. <sighs> half a star. Half a, well, well, no, no. Oh, okay. That's not what I'm giving you. <laughs> okay. See, these guys are against doing negative stars, oh, so I'm going to go dud. Yeah. Okay. Dud it is. Well, you no, can go negative you, you, if you negative. want. That's your rating. I'd give it negative at least one. Okay. Because okay. that was just okay. brutal. No, we, we can do negative. I think that's our first negative star. I don't do negative just because I don't believe it's... Re- I think it's disrespectful, but that's just my stupid no. I mean, it... it because you wouldn't give I'll, a movie a negative rating. Right. Well, we'll, I mean, we'll discuss I'm, The only reason I'm saying that is because I just found it just so unbearably boring and bad. Like, I wish I hadn't gone to the bathroom before this. <laughs> well, you, well, what you said is your rationale is that if it's offensive to wrestling, if it insults wrestling, right. you'll and give it a Right, that's what I felt. Yeah. Like, it was insulting. Yeah. Brie Bell is insulting to wrestling, I think. Yeah, I mean, to be, I guess, fair, I didn't think, AJ, I thought AJ wrestled her worst match I've seen her wrestle in a long time. Yeah, she did it with a concussion, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, forget, that's true. Forgivable. So, it's hard to... I mean, I guess I go with Dud, given the injury. Okay. It was either way. <laughs> either way, it's uh, take it. It's at best, it's zero. <laughs> right, all right. Uh, next up, we had actually probably, I don't know, either the best match of the night or the second best match of the night, depending on who you ask. Um, we had the Rhodes family, Cody Rhodes and Goldust, taking on The Shield, uh, mm-hmm. Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. Before this, though, we got a really nice promo with Dusty, Goldust, and Cody, and... Uh, I gotta say, Cody's really improved on Mike. Like he used to, mm-hmm. he never really like stood out, but like this was a promo that I think he stood out in. I thought I've always thought he was pretty solid on the mic. But, yeah, uh, okay. yeah, I, I can, I, I see what you're saying. That yeah, definitely. Uh, he just never like, he never like, um, like I think with his undashing gimmick, he was really good on the mic. But then like he kind of got dull again, and this was like one of those moments. This where kind he, of showed how he could be a standalone. He could go out to the ring and stand in there by himself and cut a promo. Oh, yeah. if he had to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so. It, that was really nice to see. Oh yeah, and just you know, Dusty can still talk. Gold Dust is still funny as hell. Him doing the uh, the the thing and yeah. Dusty Rhodes yeah. almost cracked Dusty up. Dusty corpsing. Or yeah, D- <laughs> Dusty so badly wanted to get off camera as soon as possible because yeah. you could tell he was holding it back. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and like this, like the joke has been like Gold Dust's makeup then look like a uh, Sith Lord from Star Wars. I think it was intentional actually. Whatever, it looked that cool. looked like Darth Maul. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. big time. All right, but anyway, this match was actually. Damn good. I, I really enjoyed this match. Um, and the crowd really ate this match up. They were into everything in this match, I thought. Well, um, um, and the ad. Definitely the, the finish. I thought it was kind of basic for much of the match, but then the finishing sequence was really good. Like, mm-hmm. they had a really hot finishing yeah. sequence. And um, I don't normally like to take the post match into account that much, but the post match of this was really good. Oh, yeah. yeah. It had a nice payoff. You know, a feel good payoff, which WWE never does, they, they, right. unless it's Cena, yeah. which is not a feel good payoff for most people. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, um, it yeah, I mean, it had a sense of closure, but they're probably gonna extend it further, obviously. Mm. I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Goldust and Rhodes uh, taking on the Shield for a tag team title shot match. Mm. That'd be nice. Yeah, and, uh, plus, I mean, I really always enjoy. Um, Seth Rollins is selling and bumping, mm-hmm. especially oh, at the end oh, yeah. when he took the cross around. Because oh, that was like the yeah. best cross yeah, around. He took a nice one. Yeah. Oh, I, I really did enjoy this match, though. I, I, th- I thought Dusty and Ambrose playing off each other was, at the outside was really nice, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got a bionic elbow, which I'm pretty sure everyone marked out for oh, to yeah. some degree. Right. Because if you can't mark out for that, then mm-hmm. what are you doing? What about you, Noah? Um, I, like you guys said, I really enjoyed this. Um, it was, I'm going to agree with the Orange Dream here, it was a little basic to start. Okay. Uh, but it really picked up. Mm-hmm. It was a fun match. This was one of those matches that um, 
because the before it the matches were just so terrible. It did take a, a little bit of time to get into this match, mm -hmm. but once it did, this really made me look forward to the rest of the pay per view, mm -hmm. um, which didn't deliver. But um, <laughs> in any it way. was this was uh, I think this might be my favorite match of the night. Okay. Um, well, uh, this is the only match that left a good taste in our mouth. Let's say that. Yeah, I think that the only thing that really hurt this match was you have to win or you don't get your job. That, that, but I mean, I knew that going in. We bought the pay per view, knowing that stipulation. Mm -hmm. But I just felt like the emotion of it. I don't know. It hurt the match a little bit. Okay. Um, also, I, I kind of felt like the shield. Like I think it would have been nice if like, the shield got a really good near fall. Like if Roman hit the was what yeah, was missing. like if yeah. Roman hit the spear and like Goldust barely breaks it up or something like that. Yeah, you know? they mm -hmm. they they missed that one big good near fall. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this was definitely. Um, I think it's the second best match on the show, but I think it was definitely the highlight of the show. Yeah, this is because of what you said. Left yeah. a better taste in the mouth. All right. Uh, what you end up giving this? I like the three and a quarter. Okay. Um, very fun match. Really nice hot finish. Good payoff. Yeah. I'll go with I'll go three and a quarter as well. That's what I gave out. All right. Unanimous. Unanimous. We're in agreement. All right. Next up, we had Bray Wyatt taking on Kofi Kingston in a impromptu match. I think it was kind of, um, yeah. Me and Noah. I don't know about you, Justin, mm -hmm. but we are both big Bray Wyatt fans. We think the guy is phenomenal. I think his character is really good. Uh, in terms of wrestling, I think he has a lot of potential that he hasn't quite gotten to yet, but he's doing pretty well. That's okay. fair. That's fair. I think for me, it's more of um, his character and yeah, and everything really captures my imagination. I can see it going places. I just really want it to get there, yeah. you know, or, or at least start heading in that direction. Um, a lot of these random matches are kind of pointless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This definitely felt pointless. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't bad by any means, no, no. but it didn't really belong on pay per view. It, this was a raw match. Yeah, yeah. there was. I mean, there was cool stuff in it. Yeah, uh, the the spider walk, the, the, like was the cool. extras walk. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. That was cool. One thing I will say about Bray Wyatt is like it's obvious that Bray Wyatt wrestles a match like it's supposed to be around a feud. Like you just like the way he like paces mm -hmm. the match, right. the way he has the the methodical. The, the methodical yeah, like the, he's meant to have a feud and to use his in ring style to build the feud in the match. I yeah, I'd say he's kind of a throwback in that way in the sense that it seems like his matches are very much based on his character. Like the psychology yeah. of his matches are very much character driven, which. He, don't see nearly as much as you used to. Yeah, for sure. And that's one reason, like this guy, the, the Wyatt family desperately, desperately needs a a real storyline. And uh, now this is kind of a spoiler for SmackDown, but it looks like maybe we'll see them feuding with the Rhodes family. That would be, yeah. I mean, Which, that would be good. I mean, they need something to do with the Rhodes family, yeah. and they need something to do with the Wyatt. So, so but we'll not? see. But I, I don't know. That. I'm just speculating. But they have a match on SmackDown. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I love the finish. Like the finish, yeah. the finish was awesome. It was mm -hmm. just a really quick counter statement, and boom! And it's like yeah. that was that made me pop. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess my overall thoughts of the match. It you know for not being a match, I was looking forward to it. It was about what you would expect, but um, had a very nice finishing sequence. Mm -hmm. It's a little sloppy, but it had some cool moments. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. Uh, what'd you give it? I'll give it two stars. I'll go two as well. I'm gonna go two and a quarter. I was saying about okay. going two and a quarter, but whatever. All right, and then we had another shitty match, which was Ryback uh, on pay per view facing CM Punk. And boy, if I thought the Curtis Axel match was boring, uh, Ryback is just. Ryback does not know how to do heat segments. He doesn't. Well, he shouldn't have to. Like, why would he? He's the monster yeah. heel in this match. I mean, I mean, well, it makes sense, but like. He's the kind of guy who we've seen his best matches are against, well, his best match, in my opinion, is against Daniel Bryan. Yeah. And that was a match where, you know, Daniel Bryan had most of the offense, but Ryback's much better when he just has to throw in a move here and there. See, and he it, should it, be the guy that he can take a lot of moves, mm -hmm. and it doesn't phase him as much. And right. he can just hit you with a power move yeah. you know, here and, and there, and then And the power moves are more impactful, so right. he doesn't have to have a bunch of moves. Yeah. But, but this, this really showed... Uh, Ryback's weaknesses. I mean, mm -hmm. Got we've we've said oh. a lot that it's time to give up on Ryback. Oh, it's and this proved it because CM if Punk you can't have a match with CM Punk, mm -hmm. I mean, 
Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. That was the worst CM Punk match oh I've seen in that, uh, that was, forever. The, yeah, that was probably the worst CM Punk. That might be the, I don't know, the ever, but like maybe like since like since his big push in 2011. Yeah, for that sure. That was like, yeah. that was horrible. Yeah. That was worse than the Hell in a Cell match. And what the fuck was with the finish that to this was, match? Oh my god. I mean, so uh, eye-rollingly bad. Yeah, like, okay, so this is what happened. The referee got distracted by Paul Hammond. Uh, right back comes up behind Punk. Punk low blows him. Ryback falls over, and apparently his nuts is where his paralysis <laughs> is because he laid there. Punk got one, two, three, and that was it. And Ryback made no attempt to kick out. Yeah. Nothing, he just laid down. It wasn't a roll up, he laid down. Yeah. You know, and just. Why couldn't he, Punk have just done. Okay, I've heard. Okay, I thought when I saw this, it was kind of a throwback to, like, the last year's Hell in a Cell, which Ryback also lost by a low blow. Yeah. Uh, but this was. Apparently, they didn't want either guy to look weak, but. Ryback looked weak as hell. Yeah. He yeah. took a nut shot and he can't even like get his And, and also, if you don't want either guy to look weak, why book the match? It's or, or like you know, do something. There are ways to have a guy win without making yeah. the other guy look weak. I don't know. Exactly. Just, but yeah, this was basically this match was Ryback controlling most of the match and not knowing what to do. He ran out of moves after about three yeah. minutes. It went on. It seemed something. to go on forever. Yeah. Oh my god. There's one. There's one spot in this match that pretty much sums it up. And it's when there is nothing happening, and the crowd is chanting, you can't wrestle. And he looks directly into the hard camera and says, I don't care. And that's it. <laughs> he can't wrestle, and he doesn't care. Yeah. I'm so, not going to prove it that I care, I'm just going to yeah, accept yeah, it. You're right. Yeah. You, you, what, what does he do when he gets the you can't wrestle dance? He does a suicide dive. <laughs> and then he gets the you still suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but, yeah. but Ryback, um, we could talk about for hours about Ryback and just how like ungrateful this guy sounds in interviews. How this guy just sounds like a jackass who has no intention about being a wrestler, just wants to be a star. This guy's a piece of shit, in my opinion. <laughs> He's just a piece of, piece of shit. Well, I think, you know, I've always been of the opinion there could possibly be a use for him, but not in like a main feud no. or anything like that. He's like a special attraction guy at best, squash match. Which, which is why of... so many people were behind him when he yeah. first started out, because he just came out and beat the shit out of him. That's about two... what he... He's like a bodyguard role. His yeah. you know? peak was fake Goldberg era. Yeah. That's his peak. That's yeah, what he yeah. does. And the thing is, where where can they go? Like, they, he's not believable as a dominant guy anymore because no. he's cowardly. Yeah. Um, they've really stripped him of anything that was appealing of, for fans to begin with. Yep. You have no chance or anything. Yeah, so no ch what, yeah. why, am, why should we care about Ryback? Yeah. But I certainly don't. Oh, no, yeah. no one cares about Ryback. No one gives a shit about this guy. The crowd was completely dead for this whole match except for when CM Punk hit his offense. and then well, he didn't get much in. No, but as soon as he was done... Done getting his spots in, and Ryback took over Downing. Crowd got silent. So, uh, what did you end up giving this one? I give it a star and three quarters, which might I feel like that's even a little generous because I really didn't like this. I mean, I mainly gave it even that just because you know there's Heyman involved yeah. and he was kind of entertaining. Punk with his limited offense was kind of interesting, but this match sucks. I'll agree with that. I'll go with star and a quarter, star and three fourth. That's fair. I'm, I'm gonna okay. agree with you. Yeah, this this this, this was not good though. Mm -hmm. This was hard to rate because it was just so. There was there wasn't botchy. It was just boring. Yeah, it, it's a lot and like. I feel like that's the and you've said it many times. Mm -hmm. The worst thing a wrestling match can be is boring. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know if a, if a match is bad or a guy's mess up spots, like well maybe they haven't worked together or whatever. You know, it, mistakes happen. Whatever you know, mm -hmm. but this just inexcusable. Mm -hmm. Boring wrestling. And we're talking about. The, Guy, two guys that have been pushed as top guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is a semi-main event. A horrible, horrible yeah. match. Mm -hmm. All right. Then we have the main event, which was Daniel Bryan versus. Oh, before this, we had a with like the power, the building had a blackout, which scared the shit out of us because mm -hmm. we were actually looking forward to the main event. Yeah. Well, I was, I was almost hope. Well, now looking back, I wish it wouldn't have came back out. We would have got a <laughs> refund. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. And but it's like but anyway, come, show goes back on. We get the main event, which is Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton for the vacant WWE Championship. Well, Triple uh, H is the real champion. We all know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> we're, we're 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 all shocked that there have not been more gifs or memes of uh, Triple H holding that belt. Yeah, we need seriously Photoshop like gif makers. Triple H holding the belt that has got to become funny wrestling pictures on wrestling wrestling forum. Wrestling forum, yeah. yeah. Get to it, please. Get on that, please. Yeah. Uh, send us the best one. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, this match starts out, and actually, much like most of their matches they've had together, I thought this was a pretty good match. I do think these guys have pretty damn good chemistry, and they work pretty mm -hmm. well together. Um, what do you guys say about this one? I thought it was going along better than their Night of Champions match. Mm -hmm. I think so, too. Um, I was enjoying it quite a bit. It was 
building nicely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, that finish, man. <laughs> we'll talk about that after we talk about kind of having the um, Yeah. What was that like? Didn't anybody like? Didn't like he did like a cross body the outside? They had like a, they like teased the table spot. They had some mm -hmm. good stuff in this match. Yeah, 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 yeah they, they did. did. Yeah. Daniel Bryan doing the drop kicks, laying on his feet like four or five. Yeah. Seconds. Oh my god. Doing the corner. Finally. Yeah. Seated corner drop kick. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it was weird because um, this was another match where it was going. I, I agree with Noah. It was going along better than their United Champions match, but then it seemed toward the end they were kind of holding back a little bit because they knew what was coming. Yeah, yeah. They, they kind of slowed down, and yeah. then well, let's talk about the finish. Yeah, so, let's just get to the meat of the. Daniel Bryan has the yes lock in, on Daniel on Randy Orton. Uh, big sh or yeah, Big Show comes out. Pulls the referee out. You know it's bad news in Big Show. Comes yeah, out it's, 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 it's like, it should be like a warning label. Like. Bullshit finish. <laughs> yeah, <I'm sorry. laughs> so, Danny Ryan's like, what the hell? Knocked out by the Big Show. Orton covers. Here comes Brad Max with Scott, with Scott Armstrong. Runs in. One, two. But Big Show pulls out Scott Armstrong. I, did he knock out Scott Armstrong? Too? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, he knocks out him. Gets in the ring. Orton's yelling at him. Big Show knocks him out. Poses with the crowd, his music's playing, crowd's cheering, and then the pay-per-view ends. Yep, no, uh, no finish, no anything. Not, it was just big show uh, celebrating. And oh. immediately after this, the the crowd began chanting bullshit and refund. Uh, yeah, that's what they should be chanting. Yeah, that was. I mean, come on. Let me ask you something. When was the last time a, a major company has had a pay-per-view end with a non-finish? I mean, I don't think TNA has done that in, in a long time. I, I don't know about, you know, I just remember last year at Night of Champions, they had a draw finish. Yeah. But yeah. that was that was actually time. Yeah, that was actually yeah. good. The thing is, here's my thing is, if, you ha if you're going to have a main event that you're trying to sell to people, and it doesn't even have a bell ring at the end of the match, that's unacceptable. Yeah. yeah. If it, that's not not, even it doesn't match. even have a match. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't even a match. Yeah. Yeah. This is insulting. Yeah, and uh, well, the thing is, they obviously had an extra pay per view before Hell in a Cell, right? Which they, yeah. And last year, or was it two years ago? I can't remember what, when they did that Night of Champions finish. That was two years ago. That was, that was, that was a year. That was last year. Oh, it was last year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, with Rock last or Cena and Punk. So they did the same thing last year that they didn't want to have a finish to their match to set up for Hell in a Cell, basically, which didn't happen because Cena was hurt. Yeah. And again, it's like why. <laughs> Why book? You know there would be no harm in having either man win this match. Why can't you have either man win? Yeah, this everything on this pay per view, especially this finish of this main event, could have happened on an episode of Raw to build up to Hell in a Cell, and I think we all would have been a little bit happier. Uh, we would have been happy, but well, it, 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 we wouldn't have had to pay to see. Exactly, it. it's like it's like well, that's like well, they obviously want to save the match for the pay per view. It was on free television. Oh well, you know it's like we would have been grumpy, but it's like well, it's obviously free for a pay per view. Right. Mm -hmm. But we pay people pay for this. People pay fifty dollars for this show, and they basically said fuck you, no main event for you. Yeah, no, no ending. And and the thing that bugs me is like, I I've, I've read people oh you know it's it's storyline. Well yeah, but the the thing is, Big Show comes out and punches Daniel Bryan, and then all of a sudden instantly has this revelation. And then punches out everybody else. Like, yeah. what? Come on. And it made... It, that's so insulting. And they, they shit all over their own match. Because yeah. they made their two championship contenders look like bitches. Because they both just got knocked out yeah. in one move after wrestling each other. Not being able to win for like yeah. Yeah. 30 minutes. And also, okay, this is a lot of what I had to say about Chikara this year. Like, about like how they're kind of like doing crappy. And like, oh, it's all wing bumps there. It's like supposed to make it look bad. It's like, just because the storyline doesn't make a bad match work. You know? Right. A bad think, match or a bad pay-per-view is still a bad match in a bad pay-per-view. Right. Yeah, this was kind of like the ending to your card. Yeah, yeah. You want to talk about pay per views ending badly? Yeah, that's there you unacceptable. Go. To yeah. me, that's just unacceptable. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, you can't. I understand. If it was the semi main event, it would have been annoying as hell. Yeah. Like, we probably still would be on YouTube bitching about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what we do. The fact that it ended the pay per view that way. <sighs> Most anticlimactic ending to a pay per view I've ever yeah, seen, for sure. Bullshit. Same thing about like, horrible pay per view finishes. At least they had one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, this was nothing. Right. And again, Big Show. I'm just so sick of this guy. Yeah. He's never done anything for me ever. The, the last time I was actually interested in a Big Show storyline was the Floyd Mayweather thing in WrestleMania 24, just because I was entertained by how much the crowd was shitting on Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. And the thing is about Big Show is like, 
when was the last time they did something with him that they hadn't already done with him? Yeah, yeah. ten times. Yeah. You know, everything it has been done. How many? How many times? He's, I feel like he's reached the point in his career that he either needs to be elevating mid carters or just retire because yeah. it's just he, there's no use for him, especially not in the main yeah. event. Yeah, not especially when what they need to be doing is pushing new guys. Uh, yeah, pushing this guy. Big time. All right, what do you what you rate this match? Um. I'll give it three and a quarter. I did think it was the best match of the night, bordering on three and a half, but the ending was just... Yeah. I mean, I thought it was like a four-star range before the ending. Yeah, the ending I, was I just, agree. I mean, I'm never going to watch... I don't think I'm ever going to watch this match again. Just no, because no. that ending is just... Heck no. God, no. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, go, I'll agree with you, three and a quarter. Um, I'm going to go with three stars. Okay. Yeah. But that was horrible ending. I mean, well, it, it, while I give the match a pretty good rating, and I enjoyed the match up to that point, the ending just nullifies any enjoyment I had for the exactly. match. Exactly. Really. Right. right. So and it's yeah. hard to really rate a match without an ending, you know, any higher because yeah. it's a story. It's a, a match is a mini story, and if the story doesn't have an end, well, what? How do you exactly? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. What did it bring the show overall? I don't even know. Uh, I'm gonna give this four point two five out of ten, and I think I'm maybe being a little generous. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with four just because uh, you know, in addition to the show being consistently boring, a string of just unbelievably bad matches. Um, I mean, the storyline progression, or lack thereof, was just so stupid and insulting and just pissed me off, so I'm going to go 4 okay. out of 10. Honestly, I thought it was going to be the lowest one, but yeah, 4 was mm -hmm. what I was going to go with. I guess I'll, 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 I'll choose it to 4 so it's even. There you yeah. go. 4 across the <laughs> and board. The thing is, like, it, this was almost worse than an episode of Raw, you know? <laughs> this, this, if this was an episode of Raw, we'd be saying, like, man, that was a shitty episode of Raw. Yeah, because not one, not one storyline really got advanced. Besides not, the Rhodes thing. I that guess, was the yeah, only thing on the show. Yeah. yeah. And and they wrote RVD off t t TV. That's it. Which, awesome? I don't, know. I don't care. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Let's wrap this up before we get pissed off some more. Thank you for joining us, guys. Take care. Subscribe, like, do all that. Bye.